Hello and welcome to Hillbilly DVD Reviews. Now, it's no secret that Hillbilly DVD Reviews' number one anticipated movie of the summer is Expendables 2. So what we're going to do is over the next few weeks, we're going to be reviewing all the films from the Expendables cast that maybe people forgot about, but are still worthwhile checking out. Today we're actually going to review a movie starring two of the Expendables heroes, Jason Statham, Jet Li, and the movie is War. The main story of war concerns Jason Statham as an FBI agent, as a partner. The movie starts out, they're on these docks, shit blowing up, so, you know, they're sitting there bullshitting, hey, should we call backup, let's call backup, hey, let's wait for backup, fuck it, we're going in. Anyway, basically what's going down is all these fucking gangsters and monsters being slaughtered by this fucking badass uh, assassin named Rogue. Rogue works for the Japanese Accuser and he's there fucking killing all these motherfuckers, just slicing and dicing these motherfuckers up. Rogue is the main one they're after, so Statham and his partner, they go in, but they have to shoot their way to get to Rogue. Finally, at the end, fucking Rogue gets a drop on Jason Statham, just about to kill him. And then when Statham's partner steps up and shoots him and fucking Rogue in the face, he falls into the fucking river. Fucking Rogue is dead, right? Cut to a few days later. Statham was part of the getting ready to get together and watch a fucking football game with their families. So long story short, Statham, he's kind of dragging ass, having one last cigarette. Nobody in this movie wants him to smoke. His partner, his wife, nobody. They're fucking sick of his smoky bullshit. Anyway, he's loading up his cool with a bunch of Heinekens, fucking dragging ass. Next thing you know, before he can get to his partner's house, Rogue comes in. He wasn't dead. He's got a mask on because fucking half his face got blown off. He wants revenge. He kills fucking Statham's partner, but while it happens, somehow the house catches on fire, all this bullshit. Statham and his wife pull up way too late. Fucking everybody's already dead, fuck. Cut to two years later, or however long it fucking was, Rogue shows up again in the city. Now he looks different, they establish in the story, he always looks a little different, because every six months he gets plastic surgery. So Rogue looks a little different, now Rogue it looks like Jet Li and is played by Jet Li. Jet Li shows up out of nowhere. Now keep in mind, he was a Japanese Yakuza assassin. He shows up at a fucking nightclub, which turns out to be a brothel in the back for the Yakuza. He walks in and starts shooting everybody. Holy shit, what a fucking traitor. Why is Rogue killing us now? Highlight of this sequence turns out to be there's actually a hot girl bent over a fucking table, dressed like a school girl, getting railed from behind. Fucking Jet Li comes in, shoots that guy in his head. Fucking he falls down, his dick falls out of the girl. Fucking crazy action shit. Jason Statham gets word that Rogue is back in town. Of course he wants to kill this motherfucker because Rogue killed his partner. Basically what the story turns out to be, Rogue's not working for the Chinese triads. He fucking keeps wiping out the Yukosa. Next thing you know, he's back on the Yukosa side and fucking wiping out Chinese triads. Fucking double turns anyway. It seems like, man, fucking what's up with Rogue? He just wants to kill everybody. Before he was all about getting paid and killing whoever, but now he just wants to kill everybody. Fucking kill everything that moves. Meanwhile, Jason Statham, he's trying to stop this fucking war between the triads or Japanese or at least fucking get to Rogue in the middle of it. Jason Statham kills a bunch of motherfuckers in a Japanese restaurant. Fucking Rogue kills a bunch of motherfuckers at a mansion. All kinds of crazy shit happen. Basically, the story comes down to, of course, war, Statham, Lee, they're on a collision course. They show down at the end and shit. But I can't get too much more into it because there's a lot of twists and turns and fucking reversals and shit come out of nowhere. So many twists and turns, I swear it would make fucking M. Night Shyamalan proud. So getting into the movie itself, it's directed by Philip G. Atwell. He was actually a music director, directed most of uh, Eminem's music videos. The movie looks beautiful, and that's because it was actually the director of photography was Pierre Morel. Guy who actually went on to direct his own movies later. He directed movies like Take In and From Paris With Love. So the movie has a real nice look to it. Looks fucking great. Great choreography, great action scenes. Statham and Lee both have individual scenes that really fucking, you know, show how badass. And this shit is super R-rated plus. No, we're near a PG-13. This ain't the Transporter. This ain't the one or whatever. Statham and Lee bringing their R-rated A game. So right there. You gotta see it. It's kind of a standard action movie, but hey man, fucking where else are you gonna get guys like Jet Li and Jay Satan fucking being in the same movie, aside from the Expendables, of course. So, and the action scenes are fucking good, man. They kick ass. I ain't gonna bullshit you. But because the movie's kind of like, you know, standard action fucking, you know, HBO fair or whatever, gotta give War 7 out of 10. Alright, picture and sound, man. This Blu-ray fucking shines. Real nice, beautiful cinematography, comes through on the Blu-ray, they didn't fuck shit up. Real nice fucking authoring job, everything looks great. The sound, 7.1 PCM audio, my favorite kind of soundtrack, man. Fucking uncompressed, PCM audio, it fucking sounds good. The directional effects are great, but it sounds really great, really clear. Picture and sound, I gotta give this motherfucker 8.5 out of 10. Now on the special features. 
We got a director commentary, which Phil G. Out, well, he fuck it. Hey, he gives you a lot of uh, information and shit, but he's kind of just sitting in a little booth by himself, kind of fucking half tired or some shit, I don't know. But they also have like a weird little camera on him, <laughs> so when you're watching a movie, listen to commentary. Every now and then, motherfucker just pop up in this little booth, say something about the movie, pop away. And he still keeps doing commentary, but for some reason, they don't show the little booth all the time. Just sometimes they show it, sometimes they don't. That was kind of weird. They have another uh, more traditional commentary. Don't have a little pop up bullshit with the writers. They tell you, you know, they tell you a lot about the story and stuff, but you know, a lot of it is about the script, not necessarily exactly how the movie turned out or whatever. But they still give you a lot of background info. They got a war zone trivia mode thing. I mean, you know, it's like some little pop-up bullshit. I, I don't know, man. It's just, I'm kind of over them gimmicky special features like that. They got some behind-the-scenes FX bonus, just a little bit with some picture-in-picture -picture shit where they show you a scene or two, and then in the corner you see the little guys making the special effects and shit. It's an interesting, but it's kind of like, you kind of seen and done this on other discs. Where I will give them some credit on that, there's something called a war chest. And basically, it is a little special feature for each of the action scenes in the movie, where you can like show a little feature about the story, meaning like this action scene, this is what happened in the story, this is what this action scene was trying to show. They talk about, you know, there's other little pieces where they talk about the stunts and shit. I gotta say, man, this is really what all action movies should do, is give you a little featurette, not just about the making of the movie in general, but do a little featurette for each of the action scenes. I really like that. Now we get to some more action. <laughs> there's a shit called Yakuza Fighter, exclusive interactive Blu-ray disc game. Holy shit, man, there's like some little, I don't know, Java Flash fucking, <laughs> like the little corny games that you see on computers where you just, when you just when you're surfing the internet, a little game pop up, you play that shit. This shit is corny as hell, man. Like, they, I'm sorry, but they really kind of hurt themselves putting this corny bullshit. I understand they're trying to stack the disc, but come on, man. Good collection of extras for a j otherwise kind of minor movie, so you got to give them credit for that. Some of the extra features are really good, some are kind of bullshit. Extra features, I got to give them six and a half out of ten. A lot on there. But only a chunk of it was really good. So that's it for War Man, Justin Lee, Jet Statham. Nice little fucking action movie, you know. Nothing too great, not a classic, but definitely worth sitting down and having a few beers too. I f I'm fucking crawling out of my skin, about to jump out a window right now. I want to see Expendables 2 so bad, but it ain't, you know, ain't playing. We got to fucking sit through Batman and all this other shit to come out first. So, well, you know, we're going to keep these reviews coming, keep the fucking Expendables hype building and building and building until the movie comes out. Hey, man, Expendables 2. It's going to be okay.